I hate to break it to you, but uh, I'm afraid that our food processing industry does involve killing a lot of animals. Death in farming is both inevitable and relentless, but it has never been further from our minds. This is the bit that people really don't like to see, don't like to deal with, don't like to think about. So they could have died of anything. Animals die behind closed doors, hidden from view, in huge numbers. I feel like I can't move, I'm just sort of surrounded just by a... Just walk like you're wading. In the last episode, I heard from the activists... Once you've been confronted with suffering, it changes you. Now it's time to meet the industry insiders. I think sometimes what people imagine it to be is far worse than what it actually is. But could confronting this reality really change our view of the meat we eat? That bolt comes out about four inches. Which is enough to go to the key part of the brain. Yeah. This is our incinerator. You put your birds in there, the gas burners blow gas into the bottom. It comes up through the birds and burns them. With 44,000 free-range hens under his wing, death is a daily occurrence for farmer Daniel Brown. No one likes dead animals, do but they? But it is part and parcel of the job. Yeah, so that's why I think we shouldn't hide the fact that some animals die. We have to treat them with antibiotics, dispose of the dead animals. Sometimes I think we try and pretend none of that's happening to push back against what sometimes we feel like is a vegan propaganda machine, I suppose. But we do have a moment going on here where veganism is a hot topic, where the environmental impact of our food is important but it, it to people. it won't last. It won't last? No. I think it'll only go further that no, way. No, it won't, because once people smell a bacon sandwich, that you have to really be committed. You'll end up with flexitarianism, yeah. where you eat less meat, but I think most people will still be tempted by some good meat. You don't want to let too many people on farm because it's a biosecurity risk, so you have locked gates but then it appears like this locked, hidden thing that no one can look at. Security is a big issue on farms anyway. Well, you can get protesters that will just come in and film themselves at night and things like that. So, yeah, farms are wary of that. The dilemma is real and clearly contributes to the lack of understanding between farmers and activists. But for one farm visitor, the activist's nightmare is all in a day's work. Where are we going first, Mike? I think it's a calf pick up. But sometimes you get there, there can be something else. There can always be extras. Larger animals cannot easily be disposed of on site. Mike Wilkinson is a knacker man, visiting farms in the northwest to remove dead and dying livestock. This is a big farm, this one. First one we're coming to. I think they milk about 500 cows. How often are you down at a farm like this? Every week. Really? Oh yeah. Farmers can lose a lot of stock. Yeah. Believe me. Oh, I think I've spotted it. Number one. What's next? Cow. Dead, I think. But it might be alive. Who knows? Are you desensitised to it? Because it is just a cow, sheep, a thing. Desensitised to, to it, yeah, 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 yeah. Do you think that's in any way problematic? No, it doesn't bother me one single bit. I just don't like doing horses, that's all. Because they're more of a pet, aren't they? But why do we treat horses and dogs, for that matter, differently to cows and sheep? Because they're just milking machines, aren't they? What's the going rate for a cow? I think they're 40 quid now. Sheep? £7.50. It's not a lot of money. OK, just a sheep. Just a sheep? Yeah. Right, 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 right. There you go. Sheep and a lamb. Definitely got a waft of that one. Did you? Yeah. Like, they're fresh. Are they? Oh yeah. They didn't you maybe not though. eat meat again if we get any bad ones. They don't want us to eat meat, do they? You know, the shops are full of stuff that's fake meat now, isn't it? <laughs> Should we be looking to move towards 
plant-based systems? Well, it started now, hasn't it? Is it going quick enough? For well, the, I, the don't, I don't know. Hey, hope you send us a job. Quicken the pulse a little bit. <laughs> Click and collect, it's like working for Amazon, Argos. Click and collect. Your skills are completely transferable to be an Amazon delivery driver. <laughs> All right. What's the pick up? Uh, when I first started a job, I didn't realise how much stock a farmer can lose. Mm. But they've got hundreds and hundreds of animals, you know what I mean? Some farmers lose a lot more than others, though. Is that due to bad management? Yeah. I think so. Do you know what happened to this car? It was born dead. Born dead. This is one of them things, isn't it? It's not good news, but... Purely from a monetary sense, or...? Well, no one likes having dead animals around, do they? Yeah. It yeah, happens. You don't really get used to it, do you? For every one that goes wrong, there's a hundred that go right, isn't there, so...? <coughs> We've got a cow to shoot. Cow to shoot? Mm. Like a drill. Yeah, oh, it's heavy. Is there all manner of different things that these animals are dying of? Oh, yeah. Like what? <sighs> List's endless. A lot of time you never know. Who knows? The test. Farmers don't always know. They'll do a full autopsy. If they lost a few, we'll think, hey, there's something going on here. But one or two just no. goes with the territory. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right, there's cow to shoot next. Presumably, these are the sort of jobs which you really don't look forward to. Used to it. Just get on and do it. Somebody's got to do it. Yeah. Yeah. This cow could be anywhere. <laughs> I want to make sure you get the right one. Mm. Might be one in that field. So I don't think it looks very happy. The other cows want to have a little look and. It's difficult not to project what you think they're doing, isn't it? Are you all right? Which cow is it? Oh, um, on the big yard. Yeah, is that not flat out? Yeah, that's the one. It's our baby. That's it. Right, that's that. Was it efficient? That one was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What do you think they made of it? Ah, uh, they know, because they'll go and sniff where, you know what I mean? They'll know. Yeah. They're not stupid. No, 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 I know. No, the cows know. They've got a bit of brain, is it? A cow, actually. Yeah. Right, let's get in this wagon. OK. I look at the animals that you're picking up, and I think of the individual, right? And the fact that this cow had a life, probably not much of a life, and is being dragged onto the back of a truck. And it feels... I don't know, I feel something, I suppose. Well, it's got to go somewhere, hasn't it? It's, oh, no, totally. If everything lived, we'd be overrun. Well, we are overrun to some degree. Well, yeah. We? <laughs> In the UK, we eat 30 million eggs a day. Even a free-range farm such as Dan's has to balance the welfare of its hens with the economic reality of this demand. It's quite busy because at night, they all go up there to sleep and then when they wake up at about 5 a.m., they'll come down here and they can go outside from 9am every morning. How do you possibly tell whether one has died in the night or anything like that? You walk around with baskets picking up these floor eggs. Yeah. And you just see one laid there not moving. Right, okay. Your eye expects to see movement and it doesn't. It goes from looking like something really industrial when you're in there, but then when the doors open, they're off for the day and out. I feel like a bit of a celebrity. They're, they're just really inquisitive. They're really in interested in us, aren't they? Is there an issue in how we can't possibly think of these animals as individuals? No. They're group animals. If one gets ill, they probably are all feeling under the weather. If one's happy, they're all happy. Do they like being handled? Not all of them, obviously. I mean, but do they like it? Well, we've got a mindset in the West that we think all animals are Disney animals. We anthropomorphise animals and think that they have human emotions, but they don't think like humans. They think like a chicken. They think, am I well fed? Am I watered? Or have I laid my egg? They don't like any break in the routine. That's when you get problems. Their life is pretty short. It is quite short, yeah, a year and a half. And then they are collected up and slaughtered. And they will always end up as nugget, soups, stews, that kind of thing. And they could live a lot longer. Eventually it has to die. It's, so, yeah, it's, yeah. You've got to give it as good a life as you can until that point, I think. 
Dan takes me back inside to deal with the day's mortalities. There's been two dead in house three, one in house two, and one in the house over there. So it's four today? Four today. The deads will be put in this blue box and they get put in the freezer until the freezer's full and then we fire up the incinerator. That's the hearse. The majority of farmed animals die at the abattoir, where huge numbers of livestock are dealt with every day. With most animals travelling to industrial-sized slaughterhouses around the country, smaller abattoirs are struggling to stay afloat. Hello. You're all right. Yes. You've got masks there if you want to wear them. I mean, it looks good. Right. <laughs> Today we're going to process some lambs, um, 56 lambs, yeah, yeah. so small amounts. Okay. While larger abattoirs focus on high volume, the Metric Brothers believe they can offer a more bespoke service. So we're just going to give you a look over. We don't want to get in with the animals or spook them at all. A big part of the problem with larger abattoirs is the fact that these animals will be travelling in distance. very hot conditions potentially for... Yep hundreds of miles even. For us as a business and us as a small abattoir industry, we want to see more small abattoirs and a distribution of them over the country so animals don't have to travel so far to slaughter. That isn't the way things are going. It isn't the way things are going and it's very frustrating, you know, when we can tick so many boxes with regard to animal welfare and traceability. There has been a concentration on volume and I think, you know, it's time to redress that balance. So we'll go through the other side where we can get a better look. It is a bit of a maze. It is, it is a maze. Every door looks the same. Should we start at the top end and work his way through yeah, and yeah, then, yeah, sure, yeah. yeah. How does this differ from a larger abattoir? These men can do all the different processes. These guys are treating each individual animal and some of these lads who are here, they will be selling this lamb at the end of the week. This was my granddad's butcher's shop. Oh, right. I still get people talking in the shop now about seeing the carcasses hung on the rail in the shop with the customers. It's amazing how quickly people dissociated the meat from the animal. At what point is that, the removal of the, 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 fleece. the fleece? No, I think it's the head. Once an animal becomes unrecognisable, then it's something good to eat. I think it's something that's innate, and I think some people think they're going to be repulsed by actually seeing an animal killed and whatever, and sometimes the reality is different. Do you want to go and have a look at the CCTV stuff? All abattoirs are now legally required to have CCTV cameras installed across the site. As the resulting footage can be emotive, it's a side of the business that even the most humane slaughtermen are wary of showing. The sheep are taken through into this area here and the stunning equipment actually renders the animals unconscious. And he'll look for an animal where he can put the tongs on the head of the animal. So the animal now is stunned and he's now going to put it on an elevator which works like a, a ski lift. If you move seven. to camera seven, you'll see he's already killed the animal straight away. So the animal is already bleeding out. This is the contentious part. Mm. For you it must be difficult mm. to show. It is very difficult for us to show because some people will look at this and say those animals are still alive. It, it's hard to explain to people that that is an involuntary action. Do you, as part of your work here, focus at all on the individual life that you're killing? You have to focus on the animal as an individual because every animal can be different. We are trying to consider the animals both as individuals and also in the way that they behave as a species. But and they're and sentient you beings, they can feel pain. They have actually been bred for a purpose, which is food. It's all about like telling people this is how it is. If you want to eat meat, this is how it's produced. And we do run the risk of people misinterpreting what we do and making us a target and that is that is a worry for us but if small abattoirs are going to survive and people are going to understand why they're important then somebody has to say something. Back at the farm it's time to dispose of the latest batch of dead hens. So we'll check the temperature so now we can put our birds in. I just wanted to, to sort of get a sense of how far removed we are from the nuts and bolts of death in farming. Doesn't the entire culture pretend that death doesn't happen? And you just have to manage it as respectfully and pragmatically as you can, I suppose. They don't like filling the incinerator, but now it's filled, I'm not going to be thinking about it at tea time today. Otherwise, you couldn't, you couldn't carry on, could you? The sheer scale of livestock farming inevitably makes us look at these animals collectively. But our desire to ignore this world comes at a cost both to the individual people who work long hours in difficult jobs to put food on our plates, but also to the individual animals whose lives mean little more than meat. <laughs>